I got a question about like the Kaaba and stuff. Is it how is it like pagan? Okay. Well, the good question. If you're sincere, I'll answer. Okay. When you bow to the Kaaba, does Allah live in the Kaaba? I think it's like um, metaphorically. Okay, but I ask you, does Allah live in the Kaaba? No. Okay, when the Jews bow to the temple, it's because God said his presence would be there. He would truly live in there. So when they're bowing to the temple, they're bowing to God because God said, though he's in heaven, he would put his presence there. So they're bowing to the God who lives in that house. But Allah doesn't live in the Kaaba, right? No. So why bow to it? Uh, or I'm not really sure. Maybe like veneration or... But why are you venerating a cube that was venerated by the pagans if God doesn't dwell there? The Jews, if you ask the Jews, this is in the Old Testament, their scripture. They will tell you, we bow to the temple because God said he lives there. So we're bowing to God who's there while even in heaven because he can fill heaven and earth. We're not bowing to the temple. But you're telling me you're bowing to the Kaaba and God is not there. Here, Matthew 23, 21. Here's what Jesus says. Matthew 23, 21. And whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by both the sanctuary by him who dwells within it. God is saying, my presence is here. So when you bow, know I'm here living in your midst, even though I'm still in heaven because he's omnipresent. But the Muslims don't believe Allah is in the Kaaba. So why bow to it? Especially when the it was a shrine venerated by the pagans. Uh, well, it was built by Ab Abraham. There's no proof for that whatsoever. None. Absolutely uh, not. Zero. Wait, doesn't it, like, there's this verse I forgot, like, about the Valley of Becca. Becca is not, it's not Mecca. Becca is not Mecca. Can you show me the Quran where Becca is Mecca? No, like, the old name used to be Becca. Like, where the Quran says Becca is Mecca, you're making stuff up because you're parroting what Muslims told you. Nowhere does it say Becca is Mecca, not even the Quran. Chapter 3, verse 96 doesn't say Becca is Mecca. I remember, like, uh, you're not uh, listening. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said. Can you show me where Becca is Mecca? Nowhere in the Quran does it say Becca is Mecca. It just says Becca, but Becca is not said to be Mecca. That's an assumption. You can't assume things. You got to prove it. I know what you're referring to here. 396. All right. Lo, the first sanctuary appointed for Mecca was at Becca. Now, prove to me Becca is Mecca. Um, I thought that was because, I don't know. Yeah, you, it, because there it doesn't. Nowhere in the Quran does it say, Becca is Mecca. That's what Muslims have told you. Wait, now, was it? I, I heard like multiple things. Like it used to be called Yathrib and it used to be called. Yathrib is in Medina. Oh, oh, okay. That's where the Jews settled and then it became Medina al Nabi, the city of the Prophet. We're well, getting back to the issue. The pagans, we know for certain, did honor the Kaaba, right? We know that for a fact because there are 360 idols, right? Yeah. Okay, so that we know from Muslim sources. The Kaaba was <clears throat> venerated by pagans. But we have no proof that the Kaaba was established by Abraham and Ishmael. There's no proof for that whatsoever. Well. Give the proof. There's none. Or were you born a Muslim, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that, that's what they tell you. But you got to ask questions. Say, excuse me, Sheikh. Do you have any pre-Islamic evidence, archaeology, manuscript, any writing before Islam, whether Jewish, Christian, or pagan, that mentions Abraham Ishmael went to Mecca and that the Kaaba was built by Abraham Ishmael? There is none. It's not. I'm not lying. There is none. This comes from later Islamic tradition. Okay. My, uh, my question is, why are you like going to the Kaaba? Kaaba what is it? Like it's, it's just like a, it's like a cube in like middle of the desert yeah because there are pagans who erected many kavas even your own tradition say there are many kavas one was in mecca the other was at, at taif kavas were common because they erected shrines to gods and goddesses then wait why why are there none anymore though because the muslims demolish everything in their path i mean you, isn't that obvious what did the muslims do they take over lands and they demolish shrines okay well hold up I always wonder, like, why are they, like, is it kissing, like, the stone? Is that pagan? Well, why do you kiss the black stone? Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't really know. Well, even Muhammad didn't explain it because even Omar said he didn't have any idea why he's kissing it, but he did it because Muhammad did it. Here, let me show it to you. 
So even Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says, I know that you're a stone that can neither harm nor benefit. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not have kissed you. So he didn't even understand why, but he just did it blindly, right? But so why did Muhammad command it though? Because the pagans did it. So he's taking the practices of the pagans and he's making it part of Islam. Here, let me show you here in my article right here. Did the pagans worship stones before Muhammad? Yep. Sal Bukhari, volume 5, number 661. Narrated Abu Raja al Utridi. We used to worship stones. And we found a better stone <clears throat> than the first one. We would throw the first one and take the latter. But if we could not get a stone, <clears throat> then we would collect some earth and then bring a sheep and milk, that sheep over it, and perform tawaf, tawaf around it. When the month of Rajab came, we used to stop the military actions, calling this month the iron remover. For we used to remove and throw away the iron parts of every sphere, spear, and our air on the month of <clears throat> Rajab. Abu Raja added, when the prophet sent with Allah's message, I was a boy working as a shepherd of my family camels. When we heard the news about the appearance of the prophet, we ran to the fire, I to Mu Sayyidima al Khadab, the false prophet. But notice what they did. It was a common practice, according to Muslim sources. Pagans worship stones. One of the stones is the black stone. So now here, Sal Bukhari, volume 2, Sahih, number 667, Nared Abbas bin Rabia. Omar came near the black stone and kissed it and said, No doubt, I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone. Had I not seen Allah's apostle kissing you, I would not have kissed you. So why are you guys following a pagan practice? Yeah, I just like there's a lot of questions I have like wondering about like both religion 